Man. I was about to start <clears throat> pulling the curtain. I messed it up a little bit, so I wanted to redeem myself. It's pretty. Who is it? Alt J. Alt J? Mm hmm. No, I don't know what that is. Like a triangle and J. Okay. It's called Matilda. It's pretty. Mm hmm. They had it off the album Unawesome Wave or Awesome Wave. Albums banging all the way through. What kind of music is it? Uh, they're English. You'd know it if you heard it. It's it's Radiohead type E, but not as sad. A lot of pure tone. I was gonna guess Radiohead. Yeah, it's so good. Honestly. Yeah, you've heard some. I know you've heard some of their music because it was kind of popular there for a minute. Then they did something with Miley Cyrus, and I was like. Well, that's the end of this conversation. <laughs> yeah, well, me too. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great Measures, man. Great Measures. Uh, we're going to get back to one of the favorites, Metallica. This will probably be the last time for a little while that Metallica? we... Metallica? I thought... Have you ever heard of them? <laughs> I'm trying to remember. Uh, this will probably be the last time we revisit this album for a little while. We want to kind of get into some other stuff from them, but... Uh, this is from Ride the Lightning, 1984's Ride the Lightning. This Ride, is, Ride the Lightning. So far we've done Call of Cthulhu, Fade to Black. I feel like we did something else. For whom the bell tolls. If you say so. <laughs> so this one's called Creeping Death. Uh, it's kind of inspired by, written about the Passover. Um, in, in, the, in the biblical Exodus. So I've seen two different stories on where the inspiration from this came from. One story is, so I do know for a fact Lars is obsessed with the movie The Ten Commandments. Yul Brenner. From way back in the day. Yeah, Yul Brenner plays Pharaoh and Charlton Heston plays Moses. Okay. Uh, let it be so written, he, he let has it be done. stated multiple that. times that he's obsessed with that movie. My dad's obsessed with that movie. Okay. I don't know if he's obsessed, but he used he to quote Yul Brenner all the time. Okay. Let it be written, let it be done. Well, anyway, go ahead. It's one of the lyrics from the song. Uh, so one of the stories is, and I, like I said, I don't know if I've, I can confirm this or not, but it was back in the day. Cliff Burton walks in the room and... I think it was a couple of the band members. I'm probably getting some of this wrong, but a couple of the band members were watching the Ten Commandments, and it was the, the, I believe it was the plague scene, right, or the Passover scene. Well, Something. Passover is one of the plagues. Yeah, yeah. So, he says. Again, I don't know if this is confirmed or not. He says something along the lines of, "Wow, that's like creeping death," which is the name of this song. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then. There was an interview a couple of years ago with Lars where he just kind of vaguely put it that he was obsessed with the Ten Commandments. He was always watching the movie, and you can kind of decipher from there where the inspiration for the song came from. All right, then. So a couple of different stories, you know, don't really know how true one is, but... All right. Ready? Bring it on. Let's do it. Ready to roll? Proceed, Richard.
Well, how'd you feel about that one? All right. So, I, I sometimes mm-hmm. it, Lay it on me. I get bored with. So Metallica plays in E minor a lot. Mm-hmm. So they're like. Yeah. That riff is there. something like that. Anyway, this kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I get bored sometimes with that. If okay. I was, if I was making an, I, I, all right. Well, don't let me. No, go for it. So, lay it on us. If I was, how terrible it is. No, 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 no. I, I just, I just, this is just something I thought about. Like, if, if I was. Making an album, uh, I, I would always try and have different keys for my. You sure. Know. Yeah. But I mean, I, and I overthink things, so I. Would, They're also in their early twenties making this that's album. That's no excuse, Richard. I mean, it could be. No, I mean, but it, I understand that the type of music that they're playing. Yeah, there wasn't. Does a lot more. Does a, does a lot better to be playing an E E minor yeah. a lot because you of think all the too, things like, you can do. With it being eighty four. Like, there wasn't a lot out there. Thrashy. I mean, you had your Judas Priest and your Iron Maidens and stuff yeah, like that, which that, has heavily influenced them. But both of those bands do a lot of that stuff in E minor, too. Yeah, and but um, like I said, that style of guitar playing lends itself to, to being... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, I see what you're saying. So I'm not criticizing them. I'm just saying, you know... Uh, you yourself can get bored with it. Well, that. just because if I if I'm listening to some of these, it's either A minor or E minor, and they usually resort to E minor. Sometimes the for me the t- the the songs can kind of run together in certain spots sure. because they're in the same key, my, and my ear will hear this tune or that tune. Yeah, and that song in particular, that bridge part especially, when I'm over there shouting "Die," and it's that dun. Da, na, na. Mm-hmm. It's very, uh, I don't want to say too similar, but it's close to the bridge type riff in Fade to Black from the same album. Bro, we could we could go through that whole album and find Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. I'm just going by what you've You're listened right. to. Um, but that's neither here nor there. Okay. I was just bringing that up. Mm-hmm. No criticism, Metallica, don't. <laughs> As if Metallica watches. Yeah, for real. Us uh, sitting here talking about that. But, um, <clears throat> but I was thinking, so lyrically, I always like songs that have, so I get torn because I like songs that have a definite subject matter a lot of times. I like, I mean, I, I like other, I like ambiguous things and metaphorical lyrics as well. Mm-hmm. Or pastoral being, you know, about, about, the mountains and, and the grass and the wind or whatever, the snow or whatever. But when you have a definite subject matter, such as this one, which is out of the book of Exodus, and the plagues happen because Moses was trying to get the Hebrews out of Egypt, out sure. from under Pharaoh, mm-hmm. and Pharaoh was like, nope. Mm-hmm. And then, or I think he said yes at first, and then it was like, nope. So then Moses was like, let my people go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then he said, nope. And then, so then the plagues came to try to convince him to do so. Mm-hmm. The last one being the angel of death. And they were told to put the blood of a lamb mm-hmm. on their door post so that the angel of death would know not to come in and kill. Mm-hmm. The firstborn. Right? The firstborn. Son. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so interesting thing about that. I saw a, a study about how each one of those plagues led to the other one. So there were flies, and then there were frogs, and then mm-hmm. there were locusts, and then darkness and all this. So the, the Nile turned to blood, which they, they um, showed that at this time of year, because of the insects, whatever, what, that one sort of led to the other one. Mm-hmm. And that this was just a gas that came up out of the Nile and went over the land. All right, if you take the side of saying that God did not initiate each one of these, mm-hmm. that something put into motion the first one and the rest sort of 
because of the natural laws sure. followed. One caused the other. And this one, yeah, and this one being a gas that came up out of the Nile that was heavy enough that it stayed this, you know, this high over the ground or whatever and just kind of covered the land. And it was customary for Egyptian firstborns to sleep on a cot. They got a, because they were the firstborn, they get this luxury that put them up off the ground where the gas would have hit them. Mm. Whereas all the Hebrews didn't have this, so they slept on the floor. And, but all the Egyptian families, their firstborn slept on a cot. So you could, you could have the God conversation all day long. Mm -hmm. Something had to put it into motion in the beginning. I don't know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying either way. Right. But the subject matter, so my being well versed in the Bible, I, I like all that because there's a lot to that story and you could look at it in a lot of different ways, whether it be a natural order, whether it be God, whatever. But then you drop it in a Metallica song. And so sometimes I have trouble because I want to hear what the story is somehow interpreted through the music. And so what I hear is just Metallica ride the lightning instrumental stuff mm -hmm. with this subject matter. Sure. And I'm not saying I don't like it at all. I'm, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just talking about it. Yeah. So, so that, and I like that. I like when somebody decides to put these, um, these subjects in their music. Um, but like you said, sometimes I feel if you were to take the words out of this song and, and they were just write a bunch of other words, I wouldn't be like, wait a minute, that kind of sounds like Exodus or something. What's going on? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but I do the like... The book Exodus. In, in the Bible, yeah. Yeah, there's a band Exodus too. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the book <clears throat> in the Bible. So, um, I don't know, I kind of get... And this is just how... This is just my my stupidity and my... Uh, inability to kind of just listen to it as a song because I'm, I'm then it goes into the instrumental part I'm trying to listen to the solo and stuff thinking what is he doing in this solo that's making this more Passover like mm -hmm. you know or more because I mean uh, Jewish people still celebrate the Passover big time the Passover is a big deal mm -hmm. so and this whole thing is a big deal in, in, in the Jewish tradition and there are no there are no traditional Jewish riffs in there. Or, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Or, or anything that would indicate that this music is somehow holding up the subject matter mm -hmm. musically. Mm -hmm. it, so so you, you've, written, you've written some music and then you just, hey, this is a good idea for lyrics and, you know? Yeah. That's just me. All right. So <laughs> I had this light bulb moment go off as you're talking about Metallica, this song, and Exodus. So I think I'm right on this, and, and people will probably correct me if I'm wrong. Probably. <laughs> Kirk Hammett started, or, or got, he left Exodus, the band, to start with Metallica. Hmm. While he was in Exodus, he wrote that bridge riff uh, and I, th I cannot, y'all tell me, I can't remember the name of the Exodus song right now, but there is a, an Exodus song and I don't think it's, it's not note for note, but it's, I mean, it's very close, but when you're talking about Metallica and the book of Exodus and all that stuff, I had this moment go off. Like this song goes back to when Kirk Hammett was in the band Exodus. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, and this subject matter is, it tends to be pretty, like, uh, Bob Mar or the way, when they were the Whalers, mm -hmm. Peter Tosh was the other songwriter with Bob Marley and the Whalers before it was Bob Marley and the Whalers. Mm -hmm. Um, and he wrote a song called 400 Years and it's about, it's about this. Okay. Because they identified with, with, um, the whole Rasta thing, come, saying they're out of Ethiopia, it's the whole thing. Sure. But uh, so I, I like anything, anytime anybody uses any subject matter from the Bible to write anything, because I think it's literature. What are you laughing at? I just be careful what you wish for sometimes. 
Uh, no, I just like it. In the it. metal world, especially. But Well, I mean, I just like it. But uh, there's some sick stuff in the Bible. I, I'm with you. but like, I'm not talking I'm, about, like, Bible stories. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, I'm yeah. just saying the subject matter of any ancient literature, to me, is pretty awesome. Okay. I got you. Not just biblical. I mean. I got you. I'm not trying to have the Sunday school lesson here, you know. <laughs> That's Metallica. It feels that way. Metallica just did it, not me. <laughs> no, I'm just saying I like because it, there's real stuff in there. I'm, there's I'm messing with loss that. and yeah. death and family and, and yeah. murder and, yeah. you know. So, <laughs> geez, <laughs> threw me off. <laughs> uh yeah, there's a lot of stuff. I mean, Metallica and Hetfield especially, are, are, he's he's pretty good with stuff like that, making yeah. references to things and yeah. writing about specific events. And Yeah, I just get a little, there's just a disconnect, I think, sometimes when you're, because that, those, those words are not, there's no room for interpretation of what the song is about. Yeah. about. Yeah. <clears throat> you can put interpretation in, in, the, in the story, but... That's what it, that's mm -hmm. I can find it in the in the, yeah. the story in the Bible for you. Yeah. So then uh, so there's a disconnect between like you put the music and the lyrics together and there's still like this. Mm -hmm. There's still this. There's just I guess Metallica in between. Sure. Um, I see what you're saying. Yeah. They what so are they chanting die? Die. So they want all the Egyptian firstborns to die. It's more of a crowd interaction thing right i mean i get it but see that it. that's what i'm saying like you it's know awesome like the, they've got a lot of a lot of their they had this dvd box set thing come out in the no, early 90s called live shit binge and purge and it was like three different concerts all together i mean divided up into different discs you know and back then and i mean they they don't do it as long anymore but they would before that riff would break out and while the die chants were happening, it would just be Lars kind of rolling on the drums with that beat without any guitars. And it would be the bassist playing that riff. Mm -hmm. But it would, and it was Jason Newstead back then, but he would, they would kind of get everybody started, right? Like James would say, you know, follow what Jason's doing. And Jason would start chanting, die, die, you know, on that cadence and on that tempo. And then, they would keep the crowd going with it throughout that whole section of the song. It was like they would ramp them up and build them up, shouting "Die!" die and then bring that, bring the guitars and everything in, the vocals cool. and everything. Yeah. Yeah, crowd interaction is always awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Metallica's really good at doing it too. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't assume they, this song would go over well in Egypt. Who knows? <laughs> you good? Uh, yeah, are you? Yeah, I'm good. All right. Well, you... Glad you got to hear that one. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you forced me to listen to it. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you out of the shackles one day. <laughs> mm. Thanks for watching, everybody. That was Creeping Death by Metallica from 1984's Ride the Lightning. We are Great Measures. My name is Richard. This is Judson. Great Measures, man. We'll try to stay great away from the Bible stories next time. Measures. Why? Why did they wrong? Have a wonderful day, everybody.